Uh, this is today's offering. Can you hear me splashing through all this water? God, we've had a horrendous rain down here. Let me just show you a minute or two. This is the field opposite our house. Right there. Now, not as anyone particularly interested in this, but my first car was a 410 van. I was only about 14 when I had this and I used to ride around. And then my next proper car was a Ford 100E, a Ford Popular. Um, and I got given that, but it didn't have an engine or it, the engine was seized up. And this, I was about 17 um, and I was serving my apprenticeship as a mechanic. So I stripped this engine down and repaired it all. Um, got the car running and then swapped it for a Zephyr, six cylinder Mark I Zephyr. My father was seething about it. He said I'd kill myself in such a powerful car. It's about the same power as a, as a vacuum cleaner these days. But, so I had to get rid of it. I think I sold it for 20 or 30 quid or something. So then, um, my next car then, was a chap in the local village or the nearby village of Golsithny had a sunbeam rapier, beautiful condition with a duff engine. You can see the wind blowing those chairs. Um, so he bought another one with a rough old body but a beautiful engine and the deal was that I would transfer engines um, and the payment was he'd give me the old car and the duff engine which <laughs> makes me laugh when I think about it now. Um, anyway, I did so, and I also repaired the old Duff one with the Duff engine. I think I'd done the valves or something in it. Um, and the first night out with it, skidded off the road, smacked it up, so that went for scrap as well. So then my next car cost me the princely sum of five pounds, and it was... Ah, a Triumph Renown, commonly known as the Razor Edge. This was the early one. I think it had the um, Jaguar designed engine. I'll see these daffodils all coming up here. Um, rather than the later one that had the standard Vanguard engine. Um, it was a dear old thing. From here to Penzance is about seven miles. So it's 14 miles there and back. And this would go to Penzance and to the top of the hill, bluebell leaves coming up here, to the top of the hill, uh, about a mile out of Rilubbers, and then I had to coast the last mile and turn in the lane like a lunatic um, and coast as far up the lane, which is about 300 yards long, 300 metres for the millennials amongst us. I'll tell you a brief story about this Triumph Razor Edge. Myself and my mate, Nicholas, who was the son of a local, uh, a nearby uh, vicar. We went to the barn club one night and we came out. Um, all the cars were leaving and there were two girls in a Mini. So he <laughs> coaxed me into chasing off after these girls with this, this old Triumph Renown. And I overtook them going across um, the Eastern Green and he was waving to them out the window. So then he opened the door. Now this thing had what they call suicide doors. The doors open backwards. Well, we were doing about, I don't know, 30, 40 miles an hour. So when he opened the, the door, the wind caught it and broke it off. So I had to stop and then reverse the car all the way back up the road to pick up this door, which we threw in the boot. And from then on, that car was, <laughs> or the passenger door was always roped onto the, 
no one could get in and out of the front. Um, when I sold it, a couple of months later, when the road tax had run out, it was no MOT on it, I got £12 for it in scrap, <laughs> which I was pretty, pretty chuffed about. Now we've had horrendous rain over the last couple of winters, which has washed all sorts of things out of the hedges and ditches and all over the place. And when I was trimming the hedge back in the summer, I found this monster in front, which is the headlamp. Off of the old Triumph for now. Um, obviously got left behind from where I scrapped it. Um, the headlamps on this car were amazing. They were unlike modern cars. There was only main beam on both sides. Um, so when you dip the lights from inside, the driver's side, the right hand light would go out. And the left hand one had an electromagnet inside of it. And it was this huge clunk and it would pull the, the lens down so that it looked at the road in front of you and didn't dazzle the drivers. Now I'm not sure which one of the headlights, I should imagine this is the driver's side one with a single beam. Um, one other thing about this headlight, bearing in mind this is 1968, I was running around in this, maybe 69, 68. Um, this headlight, we could never tighten it because it was quite rusty. Even back then it was rusty. Um, and as you'd be driving along, this thing would slowly start vibrating its way up up the bank. It, would al it always went to the right, I don't know why. And so I had to stop every few miles and get hold of it and give it a big crank and point it back down the road to see where I was going again. Otherwise I looked like one of those sort of um, blitz spotlights trying to pick out the bombers, this <laughs> beam of light firing up in the, in the night sky on the right hand side. Ah, those were the days, those were the days. This is my poor old tractor looking rather sad. Uh, give it a good oil up, it'll get going again. <laughs>